Um, okay. I might go then. Okay. Yeah, you should come with us. Okay. Hey, good morning. How are you? I was just gonna play this ridiculous song. Okay, so hey, how are you, gorgeous? Good. All right, so we have this cross called Bold, right? And Phil Williams. And this guy, Brother James, he wrote this song because he played at one of our like conferences or something one time. But he's very like super weird indie and sometimes I think like uh, gospel too, but he like plays guitar and whatever. But anyway, the Diana Davoska, who's the uh, basically the CEO of the coaching side of Paula Williams, not anymore, but was, she asked him to write a song on the bold laws. So in bold, in the bold class, there's a set of bold laws, like no pressure, no diamonds, right? That kind of stuff. And they're all embedded into this song. Brilliant. So look at this. The song is not great, but it is so catchy. The only time in my life that I've gotten a speeding ticket, I was like jamming out and I like, got into the song <laughs> and then realized how fast I was going. Okay. So, but it, it's really crazy. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm really grateful, number one, to have grown up in a place that
who um, came up with the whole situation. Hey, Marty. Um, she wanted to be a physicist or whatever. Like basically everything that she taught, taught and like coached about in regards to your mind is still just science, mm -hmm. right? Like there's all these sharp on your thoughts and stuff like that. Yeah. And so it's um it's really interesting because like we talk about, you know, the more you're grateful for and the more you have um like the, I mean, like literally your brain has these little my, tiny highways, right? And so that your thoughts travel through. So if you take an MRI scan of your brain, right? The ones that show up with, you know, how it's all like lighting up and sparking, the ones that show up the brightest are the thoughts you have most often, right? So it's actually, if you have a bad thought more often, that, high, that little highway gets bigger and it's easier for the bad thoughts to travel, right? And, or for you to be in the habit of that. So like all of that stuff is so crazy, right? But totally, it's, uh, and real estate is such a mindset business. So it's super important um, from that side too. All right, so today is a really, I love this one um, uh, about the value proposition. So I gave you guys an extra sheet. This is my own thing. It's not pretty, it's not really pretty. <laughs> But um, there's literally this little cutout on the second page. This is from the Red Book, MRA, the Millionaire Real Estate Agent. Okay, it's just on from there. But this is about how to write your own mission, vision, values, beliefs, and perspective. Basically, your value proposition, but also like how you are meaning to find it. And while that's in the book, then there is Find Your Why, this book by Simon Sinek. Um, it's the, it's blue normal like the, the text is blue. In this book, uh, he has two. One is start with why. That's the first one, and then there's find your why. So the find your why is what you want if you want to read it. Um, he talks about what is it that makes people do business with certain brands or people, right? And the short answer, spoiler alert, is that. It's because it says something about me to be in business with her, mm -hmm. right? So like he uses the, Simon Sinek uses the Apple example, how people wait in line overnight to get the iPhone, even though they can get it the next day or in three days, right? <laughs> yeah. And uh, so why would someone do that? It's because it says something about that person. He wants to be the first one, right? Or he wants to be the, the one that can tell the story of like, I've done that, right? Or that's the first one and I wanted to try it or I'm so geeky or whatever it is. But this is the reason people do business with certain brands. So he talks a lot about how we, how we make our own value proposition. So that book is really great. And then this is from the MRA. And then, um, so I wanted to give you this, we're gonna do this together today, but, I want you to, I'm going to walk you through a couple things here real quick and really fast. Like this, it's all stuff you already know. Okay. This is more important. So then it has these questions broken down from the, from the front. All right. So like your mission is why you do what you do. So it answers the question, why does my business or whatever you're doing exist? All right. And then the vision piece is like, what's the world or lives going to look like? When you've accomplished your mission so basically answers the question what will your life or the lives of those around you in your community look like once the mission has been accomplished so say you're a company that's um for every house you sell you plant the tree right so that would be the mission is to make plant trees and have cleaner air or what that kind of thing right so it's like well, how are you making an impact type of a question okay and then um, we'll go deeper into these, but I just want to give them to you real quick so you can think about it while we're doing this. So, uh, values are the principles you operate under to accomplish your mission and vision. It answers the question, what is important to you? So, timeliness, uh, being organized, um, uh, giving great experience, having great relationships. I don't know, what's important to you? Those are your values, right? Um, and then beliefs are what you believe to be true. It answers the question, what rules will you follow? So you're going to think standards on this thing. 
So for example, we believe that everyone should have an equal opportunity to purchase a property or whatever. You see what I'm saying? Like my company, I believe, like my personal one is that I want every agent to have a simplified business plan that they can easily follow. That's basically my standard, right? That's what we want for everyone, right? Okay, and then finally, the perspective is how you view yourself. It answers the question, how do you view yourself or your business at this moment? Where is your business today? That's a tricky one. And before we get to that one, that's, it's, it's an important one, but it is the last one for a reason because it's kind of like, it's almost like self-bragging in a way, which is a really hard thing for a lot of people. It's like almost like bio, writing up your own bio. The worst. <laughs> it's the worst. I can yeah, be it's, it's just... <laughs> And so there are ways you can ask people, there are different ways to like help you write a bio, right? You say like, well, what do I, what do you think of me? What do you see me? Like what kind of a vibe do you get or that kind of thing, right? Yeah. So we can talk about that, but I wanted you to have this, we're gonna actually go through this and I'll give you some examples so you guys can think about it um, in like 20 minutes, okay? Um, but if, but just so you know, so as we're going through this, all right? Um, okay, cool. So delivering the value proposition in terms of real estate. So this chapter is really about um, uh, it's it's defining your value, but as you can see, what they're talking about is how do you actually what are you gonna tell the client that you're gonna do for the fee? So number one, craft a simple and precise description of the benefits from you basically, and then clearly convey what you do to earn the fee you charge and then make your value proposition covenant between you and the client. So um, <clears throat> some people like to do like a promise. There's actually a script called the promise script. And it's like, hey, if I fulfill my duties to you, we find your property and you have a great and smooth experience like I'm promising you, would it be okay for me to ask you for two things? One is I would love to get a review from you and I'll remind you afterwards. And then I would also, I'm gonna ask you if you know of any other people that I could give the same great experience to, right? And if they say, yeah, that's fair enough, if I have a great experience, some people actually have a little covenant that they say, great, let's, let's do this. It's my promise to you and your promise to me. So there are different things you can do inside of your, um, you know, listing presentations and things like that. So the value piece that I gave you slightly different than what this chapter is like talking about, but still, I think that if you don't do that piece, it can be difficult to even put together your listing presentation because you're not gonna be able to say like what you stand for, right? Remember people do business with people that, where there's some sort of meaning to them, to them about doing business with you. Right. Um, so, <clears throat> uh, crafting the sample and precise description of the beliefs and things like that, if that's actually all of these three steps, they're going to go in your listing presentation and in your buyer presentation in command, which I'll show you in a minute that how, what you can kind of do with those two. All right. And then uh, we talk about the aspects of service. All right. So, um, <clears throat> These three things, you kind of have to know the underlying, you know, uh, purpose of real estate, which there's two different things, right? There's the buy side purpose and then the sell side purpose, right? And so um, being able to, to communicate that. And um, let me tell you this. Okay. When Gary Kelly was researching a millionaire real estate agent, he noted that every top producing agent he spoke with had a deep and almost inherent sense of service. You cannot grow a real estate business if you don't prioritize your client's experience above all else. A stellar experience is how you earn your commission and get referrals. Right? So these are the three basic things that basically he identified that you have to have in, in place for to bring great service, okay? So you have to have a purpose, which you're gonna have your purpose, but you have to know the purpose of the real estate profession, which for the buy side 
is basically get the best price with the least amount of hassle and most value, right? And, and have a great experience purchasing the, the property, right? On the sell side, it's get the highest price <laughs> with the least amount of value, you know, this kind of thing. So, yeah. I was going to say, my sister just went through an experience selling her home, and she said that um, she had a good experience with, with the agent, but the thing that she would have liked to the agent to have done more is to make it clear to her what all the different documents stand for and it would be a little bit more timely and, and uh, expressing things to her. And um, so, you know, that made me think that, you know, to really get back with my clients and make sure that they understand everything that they're signing and what the process is. And um, that, that would have made, she said, for a little bit better experience for her. Oh my God, totally. Um, so two things in that say one, what you just said better than I could have said. So um, A, there's the personality type thing, right? So somebody's gonna, if they're really high eye engineering type, they're gonna wanna read that whole contract and really have you explain to them and have that time to sit and whatever. Or if you're a high D like me, I'm just like, give me the bullet points, like chop, chop, let's go, <laughs> right? And if you're opposite of that person, then you have to know how to put that hat on, you know, to like slow down the speech and go a little, it's not the wrong Whatever it is. Because it, it's, it's all part of the experience. Mm -hmm. So that's one, is the personality types. I understand that's, that's not in here, by the way. So that's really good. Um, but the second one is, um, what did you say? The process. So I have won listings before from the simple fact that I had a graph for them inside the listing presentation. It's, it was like a little game board, like one of the, some sort of a shoots and ladders type of a thing <laughs> that goes, you know, here's the process. Yeah. And when I won that, it was an expired listing. Uh, and I was kind of like, should I even put this in here? Because they already did it once, but obviously the house didn't sell. So it never went into escrow. So they didn't know anything beyond it being on the market. I'm like, okay, it's gonna be in here. So I went over it with them. They called me, they're like, okay, you got it. And I said, if you don't mind me asking, what did I do that the other people didn't do? Because I was on a learning, right? Mm -hmm. And they said, you were the only one that showed us the whole process mm -hmm. from beginning to the end. I didn't go into every little detail in the form, but just like, just the general roadmap is really super useful, you know? And you can find there are roadmaps. I have one inside of the drive that I shared with you guys, but um, that I'm happy to send it out to you too, but, um, that I found it on Google. <laughs> like I just Googled real estate roadmap and it gave me, oh, there's a million of them. So just take a look or you can create your own, obviously. But um, yeah, same goes for the buyer side, obviously too, right? So just depends a little bit. All right, so um, as for the, the buyers and sellers, um, yeah, let's talk what, what okay. The underlying purpose of real estate, right? Different for buyers and sellers. I just want to say this in the words, right? Buyers finding them the right home, the best price, the right time with the least amount of problems. Sellers netting them the most amount of money, shortest amount of time with the least amount of problems, right? So those are that's your basic purpose. And so, how do you put that into context for somebody who's like, well, start you go to the consultation with them, and you're like, okay, so what are we looking for here? How do, you, how do you convey that then to them that you, because you're going to help them, this is why that you're not going to have any problems, right? It's, it's important to be able to like actually articulate that. So you have to think about that a little bit. And, you know, okay, it's usually it just goes to motivation. What's their motivation? Like, hey, <laughs> no worries, no worries. You know, like it just, it, if you can figure out their actual motivation, you can figure it out. Like, when do you have to be somewhere by? Okay, well, then I recommend we do this because that takes a while. Right? Um, or even just digging, even just digging into the um, digging into their timeline. Like, people will say things. Like, you have, for instance, a seller, and they say, "Okay, we want to start like putting the home on the market in April," you know, and. Uh, Okay, well, what does April mean? Like, you want to 
have it be an escrow in April, you want it to sell in April, you need to close on it in April, why? Where do you need to be? Do you have the next property lined up, right? Like that's how you kind of questions always help deliver your value proposition. Yeah. That's the basis of it, right? Because it makes people feel like you're talking, you care about them. Okay. And then you have your actual value proposition, which is basically um, how you're going to deliver the purpose. And also maybe it's the inside of your listing presentation. And then exhibit the continued drive to put your clients' needs above all else. So I think that that crosses one is your fiduciary duty, which everybody likes to say that word a lot. <laughs> okay. Um, but you have to um, let them know that you're looking out for their money, right? So Diana used to have this same conversation. She would say, like, the people would ask her for the uh, commission drop, like that reduction. And discount and she would say well <clears throat> if i do that for you and i can't even watch over my own money how do you expect me to watch over your money like how could you even trust that other agent if they're not looking after their own money mm -hmm. well the other agent said they're going to be four percent but if they can't even look after their own money how are they going to protect yours so good so good yeah. <laughs> and people might say well no it's, you know real estate is one of the best ways to build wealth is also one of the easiest ways to lose it if you don't know what you're doing, mm -hmm. right? So there's a lot of, it's not scripts, you know, but um, being able to say it and articulate those three things, so that's basically what they define as service because it's all those people that are the top, top agents, that was the common denominator mm -hmm. for them is that they were service oriented. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, <clears throat> Okay, purpose of real estate, right? Um, value proposition. So, definition. And um, your value proposition distills your service offerings into a succinct set of benefits for your client. It states what you do for the client to earn your commission and helps explain the complexity of what you do. It also helps hold you accountable to high standards. So, why is the value proposition uh, important enough to be included in these aspects of service? Right, it's over here. Have, have and communicate a clear sense of how you deliver the purpose. Why, why is that important in there? Because you could just tell them how, how you're going to sell real estate and how you're going to look after it. And then how you're gonna look after their interests, right? Mm -hmm. Why does it matter why you're here doing what your purpose is? They probably would like to align with your ethical code. One hundred percent. Which then goes back to who are you prospecting to, right? Mm -hmm. Like I always tell that Pomeranian story, right? They already have a common denominator. People want to do business who are similar to them. So um, one agent, my friend Jenny, she's in Oklahoma. She donates out of every deal, whatever the ten, uh, some small percentage, five percent of her commission to whatever the client's choice of charity is. Oh, that's cool. So it's not just she didn't just pick a charity. Right. She's like, what charity? Where do you want it to go? Yeah, yeah. Cool. And then yeah, and she does so much business off of that because then it goes into the newsletter and every closing and then that goes into the neighborhood and here's what we do and then those those businesses are involved in that right and so it's just really great all around win 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 in fact that wall right behind there is going to be our new wall it used to have the alc members there but i think we're moving them that's why it's blank we're going to put um community involved people on there so like if you're a part of a certain charity or you're the head of a chamber or you're the whatever those are all great ways to you know get business so think about what that might look like right all right um functionary versus fiduciary what does that mean any ideas Okay, so we're going back to middle school English here. 
Fiduciary is both an adjective and a noun. As an adjective, it refers to something dealing with trust, especially in relationships. So you have a fiduciary duty to your client to protect their best interest during, which will most likely be the largest thing they'll ever buy, the sale of their life, right? As a noun, fiduciary refers to the person who has a fiduciary obligation. So you're, it's the both. You are the fiduciary and you have a fiduciary duty, right? Functionary is one who completes tasks for their client, whereas fiduciary completes tasks and goes beyond by placing their client's interests ahead of all others, even their own. Okay. Right? So you don't want to just be like, we're going to get this done and it's fine and everything goes nicely. We also have to like surprise and go like client, <laughs> right? And help them like, you know, the whole, they have to, we have to communicate your value. Yeah. You always have to tell people what you're doing. They don't see, if you, if you don't tell them and you're doing all this stuff in the background, they don't see it. Yeah. Anyone ever have a job where you were working your ass off and then your boss is like, where is she? And it's like working. But you, if like, if you don't tell people what you're, I, I used to go around my, my, I work in a dealership. I'd be like, I'll be over here cleaning the car, you know, like, and, or I'll be over here. I'm going to have to go do paperwork, you know, in there, find me, right? And they, I didn't need to do that, but they need to know where you are, what you're doing. So it's that constant, like, communication to them, not just when they call you, right? All right, you guys don't know this. Um, okay, there's the buyer stuff. This is from 2018. <laughs> but it yeah, is, this is, came up in my listing um, presentation too, and I was like, can we get a new more style? That's <laughs> weird. I don't know why the slides haven't been updated, but, um, but you can look this stuff up on NAR, and maybe that's something you want to take with you to um, your, you know, uh, presentation. Mm -hmm. There's a report they publish every year in January, normally, sometimes December, um, that goes over what was the things that buyers liked and who, what was the demographics and whatever and all this stuff. So um, they want to get the right home to purchase, negotiate the terms of the sale, help with price negotiation, and then some other right? So other stuff that they want. And then what do they value? Reputation of agent. Agent is honest and trustworthy. Agent is friend or family member. Agent's knowledge of the neighborhood and other. Okay. Knowledge uh, of the neighborhood. Can't tell. 13. Is it this one? Yeah. Yeah. Knowledge of the neighborhood. And then there's the rep. So how do you build this if you have no sales? Community, reviews, uh, referrals, service, right? Um, that kind of stuff, like, like we, charities. Yeah, right? like we talked about when you were here earlier this yeah. week, I went ahead and reached out to prior clients for my photography business and just say, hey, are you open to doing like a two to three sentence, just character reference, not yeah. speaking to my ability as a photographer, but just how it felt to work with me in business and what you think my integrity, ethical, blah, blah, blah is. And it, they came back immediately and were like, That's absolutely. Awesome. And so that I could put in my presentation. Yeah. Myself. Yeah. That is so great. How did it feel to work with me? I love that. Ooh, goosebumps. <laughs> love it. How did it feel to work with me? Yeah. But take a look at this. That they value that the agent is friend or family member. They, I guarantee you, they ask people who also didn't buy houses with their like people because this is probably just asking like if you were a buyer what would you value because this normally doesn't turn out too well unless it's like truly really close close right uh and i say that only because there are so many agents out here that are not full-time so like when i ask a for sale by owner for example like well have you ever if, if you were to list this house, who would you list it with? Mm -hmm. And they often say things like, well, you know, my son's wife is like in real estate. And I'm like, oh, okay, great. And she'll probably give you a great discount and stuff. Let me ask you a question, does she have a job, right? Because like, not in that, those terms exactly. <laughs> but basically I'm like, hey, do you have a job? Yes, okay, you're very busy, right? 
do you think that you can do the job better than I can? And they're like, yes, of course, you're not, you don't have my job. And I'm like, great. So it took me a long time to get to this level of mastery in my job, yeah. right? Yeah. And so I wanna make sure that you have somebody who's gonna represent you and be there and help you in every step of the way and not just like when they have time at night mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's not, I'm not saying you can't be a part-time agent. You can, 100%. But when it's somebody, usually it's an excuse. They're not, they weren't gonna list with them. They know them, they might have said something to them about it, but they probably weren't actually gonna list with them because at the end of the day, most of those people will be like, yeah, well, she's actually not really into it and has been out of it for like 13 years. And da -da -da. oh, I found out she doesn't even have her license anymore. Like it turns into, a, it's, it's only a, I don't know you yet type of a thing. So I don't want you guys to take that literally. However, stay in touch with your friends and family members, obviously, because, you know, clearly it can be a lot of fun if you solve them, solve with friends, because you're like, yeah, let's go to happy hour and talk about it, <laughs> yeah. you know? Um, okay, so then sellers, they want help marketing the home to potential buyers, price the home competitively. Um, Sell the home a specific time frame, find a buyer for the home, help with negotiation and dealing with buyers and other, right? It's not rocket science, but you gotta put this stuff somehow into your, how you communicate, how you're gonna get that to them. Okay, any thoughts on that? Questions? It's pretty pretty straightforward, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, when do you, you got it, they gotta go by a certain time. It's gotta be competitively priced so that it actually sells. Okay, what sellers value? Reputation, agent's friend, family member, experience, agent is honest and trustworthy, and other. Okay, so what are we gonna do about this experience piece? We're gonna tell them how experienced our team is here at KW. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> this team did 55 deals last year. Mm -hmm. How many did that agent that you interviewed before me do last year? <laughs> They might have done one, two, three, four, even 10 deals last year, but guess what? Our office was 10 a weekend. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Competitors. So um, this piece, you gotta know who your competitors are, right? Why? Keep your friends close, your enemies close. <laughs> Kinda. You gotta know what they're doing. Yeah. Like who's gonna take you out? Yeah. Right? So Gary Keller always says, here's what we have planned. We need to know what is going to take out the realtor in the future, if anything. And then we build everything around that. And that's why we have planned. So you want to think about if you come across like something that's super cool, like, you know, what could take you out against the other agent? What, what could they be doing? that maybe it doesn't matter if you know how to do it. That's why I would say, we gotta learn the game, not just like a game, right? Like we have to learn the whole game and understand it instead of just learning someone's one way of doing things. Cause something, those are, you get there later. Like that, yeah. I see, I see on TV all the time. And it makes me think, like they, they talk about ideal Asian for um, home path or this, two or three of them that are advertising on TV now about Hey, you know, we're doing stuff for 2% commission. Well, uh, you know, it makes me think, well, that's, yeah. that's definitely. We got to know why. It's, yeah. you know, it's not necessarily a bad thing to have those competitors. It's just a different model. For instance, Redfin's model, right? They, they advertise 1% listing. 1%. But in reality, it's not 1%. They sell to pay the buyer's agent. Yes, yes, so it's yes. actually three and a half percent. But on the side of the whole building in LA, a sky rise, it's a ginormous red one percent for red thing. You gotta know how to explain that to the right. That's yeah. on the that's on the listing side. Right. So it's only one percent to list, but you still have to pay the buyer's agent two and a half percent. And that's why Redfin has agents for buyer's agents because they just want the listing and then they market the heck out of it and get buyers from it, right? That's their model. And they don't pay the agent the two and a half percent. They pay them like 200 bucks per client that they show. 
that's it. So, so you're getting little flat fees here and there, but you never make the two and a half percent to yourself. Red me collects it because they need to make money marketing the listings because they only took one percent. It's just a different model, right? So it doesn't, uh, yeah. It, it maybe that works for you, but they also won't come and open the door to you if, if um, you know, like, let's say I'm she's a seller, and she lists with Redfin. Her house goes on the market, and then on the their website you can request showings. Guess what? They're not gonna go. First of all, they don't even open the door for anything that's less than five hundred thousand, other than the open houses. They won't go show it to you. No one will show you the property. How is that right for her as a seller? Right. right? It, it's just open house, 8 to 8 p.m. on one day, and that's it. Or you have to go and, like, you know, have You really kind of have to know, you know, know how you're going to explain it. Yeah. Yeah. I can, I can see a lot of people that are out there. The bottom line, I would think, is how much is this going to cost me to get my house sold? Basically, what's the commission? And, and if you've got somebody saying they're going to do it for a third of what I can do it for, then I have to be able to explain why I'm yeah. worth that extra amount or why they're not <coughs> telling you about the other percentages like you mm -hmm. mentioned. They're not talking about the buyers agent and some other things you know so always just remember this anytime you have those conversations hey Eric can I can you give me a marker can I borrow a marker from your office thank you um remember that um it's not about what it costs it's about how much they net in their pocket okay every time somebody tries to talk to you about your commission you want to that's good this sort of last one, last one, more though. It's okay, I can use them though. Okay. So right on there too. Okay. Just take those. Thank you. Uh, right? Because look, what does it matter? Okay, say that you have Redfin here, right? And then you have you. So you have, you're going to go, okay, so Redfin's going to charge me 1%. Mm -hmm. No, they're going to charge you 1% plus 2.5 for the buyer side, right? List. So now you're going to list the property, let's say at 800000 And, but because of their model, it doesn't necessarily quite sell. They're not showing it to as many people as you would, right? So you, they get a few offers here and there, but they're not going to get the frenzy that you're going to get because you're going to say, put the home on the market on Wednesday, do a broker's open on Thursday, food, refreshments, everything. Absolutely no showings until Saturday noon, right? With drinks at the open house. And then all the people line up and they all see each other and they're like, oh my God, we have to put offers on this house, right? Because you did all that. They don't do any of that stuff. This, this is just ooh, open house. And then somebody stands there all day. Right? That's their model. I'm not saying it's bad. It's just a different model. Mm -hmm. So maybe they end up, oh, and by the way, negotiations. They, they don't do that. They don't, they're not going to negotiate on your behalf and know the other agent and do any, any of that stuff. It's offers and that's it. Basically, it doesn't, you don't have the relationships like that. So let's say that now the, per, the buyer comes in and they want, so first of all, 1% of this is what? 8,000. How are they getting away with that though? Is that not false advertisement if it's really 3.5% potentially coming out of the seller's pocket? It says 1% listing. I know, but how, how, are they, how, how is that legal? Yeah, I know. Isn't it crazy? It, it will say when they actually have the talk and then, oh yeah, but you know, you have to, and, and at this, like they already kind of, you're already in the appointment. So I'm sure people still feel like, oh, well, it's still only 3%, 3.5%. Right. Right. But, but, you know, you don't have somebody like you explaining to them what that actually means. Because in reality, it's about netting something. So, um, right. So 800,000. 
times 2.5% is 20 grand here, right? And then let's say inspections, and they're representing, let's say they're representing the buyer, or, um, they're only representing the listing. And then I go in with my buyer. I can still, somebody else can represent the buyer. That's why we have to have the two and a half in there. So I go in and I'm like, hell no, this thing needs a new roof. It needs, you know, there's water in a crawl space. It, it, there's termites, whatever. We need 50 grand off, right? Nobody's going to say no to me on that side. They're like, okay, that's what it is. Ooh. So now what do you got? Right? So we, or, yeah. Seven eight, eight total. So now you're at seven. What? What is that again? Seven uh, twenty-two, right? Well, where do you have the fifty thousand now? That's for what now? Inspections, negotiations. So I represent the buyer, and Redfin has the listing, right? So I we do the inspection, and all the shit's wrong with the house. So now my buyer's like, no, we're gonna walk away. We don't get that money for it to fix it. Who said that? Was it you? Who was it? Who just asked me where do you have the? Oh, okay. you didn't see it. Sorry, I didn't see it. Yeah, yeah. Is, is, does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, yeah, for sure. I mean, they, I mean, they can say, either fix it for or us or lose the buyer. But they, they're just going to say, just give them the credit, right? Yeah. You can do either or. Right. Okay, so they don't want to, they just want to get it sold. So they're going to be like, no, we'll just credit you. You do the, you do the fixing, right? Yeah. So now this person ends up with 722 in their pocket. Okay. Okay, here goes you. You list the house for 800000 Okay, you take a 6% commission, which is 24. What is that? No, I mean, uh, 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 sorry. I'm not going to sound like you say. 48. 48. Right? And then uh, I'm in the inspection. Uh, I do the inspections again with my buyer, but you're representing the seller. And I say, hey, I want 50 grand off. You're going to say, yeah, go get out of here, right? And no, maybe we'll give you half. The roof is not, it doesn't need replacement. It needs a little fix. That's $2,000, Sonia, not 50 grand, right? Yeah. And you're gonna look into it and you have your own, maybe you have your own inspector go in and all that stuff, right? So it's totally different. Let's just say that you give me a uh, five grand credit, okay, inspections. I didn't get 50 grand. I only got five grand from you because the roof actually just has one corner that leaks. And by the way, my head will warm. These guys are not gonna check it, okay? So here, you're at 800 minus 48 minus uh, seven, what? 40, 47, is that right? 47, yeah. Okay, Mr. Seller, which one do you like better? This number in your pocket or that number in your pocket? Well, they're gonna go, well, that number, obviously. Well, great. And that's only if we only have that offer. Cause guess what? I'm gonna make a killer open house. And we're going to have 55 offers, and your price is going to be probably actually 900000 in which case you have in your pocket, well, then this changes a little, right? Right. But still, let's say 900 times 6%. So that's 54 um, plus 5. Okay, minus. So that's, that's 8. Uh, 41 yeah. in their pocket. Yeah. So over a hundred thousand dollar difference. Who cares what I charge when in the end you net more? Mm -hmm. So good. You're showing yeah. Sonya, right? I wouldn't like that. Sonya, right? Sonya, yeah. Sonya. Okay, so Sonya, the bottom line is you're saying that we have we give them a more of a personal touch mm -hmm. that we can, you know, maybe manipulate the numbers a little bit better than. Red trans gonna just mm -hmm. this is it. This is what your net's gonna be and deal with it or whatever. We have a we're, we're constantly talking with our client, letting them know that well, maybe I can do this. Or, or, you know, 
but I mean, you know, give them that. Yeah, and you have the relationships, and you you have their back. You have the fiduciary duty. You just write your value proposition. Treat you down to a higher level of service, right? Yeah, it's know. way better. And someone is actually looking after their interests, not just taking the listing for the sake of bringing more buyers. Because every listing is always going to bring you at least two buyers, right? So you keep the ball rolling by taking the listing and getting more buyers. You get buyers for it because people will call you and they don't have an agent. So you pick up buyers. That's their model. To me, that's functionary versus fiduciary. 100%. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Oh my God. This is why you guys were teaching the class. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are teaching the class. Okay. So before we run out of time, because we are going to go on broker tour. If you guys want to come, you're going to come, right? Yeah. yeah. And JoJo is here too. So broker, yeah, broker's yeah. open. Does anyone want to go? Yeah. Okay. So we take a couple cars and we go through a couple of houses. Um, you can take like social media stuff. It's really great. It makes you feel like you're working in the business. You can see what's there. I go around like on the wood because I want to know like use Home Depot or real wood. Um, like I just want to know what, what's like the trends or this and that. And it's really great for your social stuff to show people. It makes you look like you're actually like a realtor. I mean, I'm excited to go with people because I've been doing it solo up in my area for like three months now. Oh yeah. Hour, so I'm just yeah, excited yeah. to like yeah do it. What day is Elsa going to on Fridays? Oh, uh, well, I don't know. I haven't oh, done too much, but, so I've been doing Marina, Santa Monica, yeah. like Palisades, okay. and then like Southwest Tuesdays. Los Angeles, Tuesday, Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so Redondo and Torres oh, broker opens are Thursdays, 12 to 2, Hermosa, uh, and Manhattan and El Segundo are Fridays, 12 to 2, and the LA ones, like the whole Bel Air or Large Mall or West Side, that whole area is Tuesdays. Uh, 11 to 2 normally because it takes a little longer to go. Yeah. Okay, so this is why you need to know your competitors. So now you have your worksheet. So as you're thinking about this, <clears throat> all of this is going to come together in the tech too, right? So when you go in um, to, oops, Command, right? Um, <clears throat> I think this computer never remembers me. <laughs> I know you even told it to this week. I always tell it to, but whatever. It's probably set on a no saving setting. All right, so in command, you can go in here to designs. And I will tell you, you do not need all the, I guess I could just say it here. I think that's what you did last okay. time too. That's not <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you're gonna go to designs over here, okay? And then you go um, create a design. And so you're gonna not do an email, you're not gonna do a social post, but you're gonna do is print marketing. So your listing presentation, buyer decisions, uh, flyers, all of that stuff is gonna be in print marketing. Um, Okay, and in here you can take a look, but what I, my point here is that whatever you guys decide with the value prop, um, the fiduciary, functionary, all of that stuff, you can, this is, you can sneak it in here, mm -hmm. okay, so that it looks like it's still in with the thing. So there's two different things in here. Um, there's listing presentations and then, oh no, it's not in here. It's probably in one of the other ones, but there's also like a seller's guide. That's just a generic thing that you could drop off of people and not about you to just like, how, what's, the, what's it look like to sell the property? But yeah, pick one of these. And then once you do, let's just pick the really super simple one like this one. It has uh, a whole bunch of stuff built into it and you don't need all the pages. So rather put in the things that make sense to you. Like for example, that's, that's by the way, that's nothing but a net sheet. That's called a net sheet. And you should know how to do that in your dreams with people because you don't need to know that because they're gonna go, oh, well, what about the escrow fees and title fees and blah, 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 whatever. It's gonna be apples to apples, right? Forget it still, right? What size, or if they owe money on it, you would just take an, oh, we still have a mortgage for 200 grand on here. 
right? You just take that away, but it's apples to apples. So regardless, you have the same thing, right? Yeah. If you can do that, that is really effective to do in front of them. You can have the escrow make it for you before you go in different scenarios. But I find that it's better to do it in writing because guess what? Also, when you're doing it, you're probably sitting like kitty corner on the kitchen table, right? Um, so you're like doing it like this. So as I'm writing it out, I can look at her and see what, what she's thinking. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I do. I'm like, you see this right here? Because they're gonna look at what you're writing, and now you can see what they're thinking, right? And they see you yeah. doing it in that moment, knowing that you are a true professional. Yeah. Right, than, right. Oh well, I had someone pre-print it for me, or what? You know, just it's different. And it's it, it it's there's too many numbers, and it's printed like they don't know where to look, you know. So they're like, oh, that okay, gibberish. I don't know, like get it. But when you're going line by line, mm -hmm. right? For sure. So. Okay, so a listing presentation template, and then you have um, all the pages. They put on bottom right. Bottom right. Yep. Oh, right. Sorry, this is just very funny. I just recently did this, so I yeah. know where it all is. Right. Okay. Now. <laughs> so here you go. So you can take a look at which ones, which pages you like. But I will say that the okay. So instructions. You're not going to grab that one, right? And so you just go through. You don't need 27 bio pages. That is like, it's so annoying to me if this is my opinion, but like if this presentation is about them and we start it with a bio of us, what? <laughs> take it out, it doesn't matter. So don't get overwhelmed, that's my point. Um, but look, you can hide your, your value stuff in here, like in the different, um, right? Your custom marketing plan, for example. You might have a totally different listing presentation and you can just add pages to it, the things that you find, like the roadmap thing and whatnot, you know? How many pages do you find is the sweet spot? Because I literally just pop, sort of polished mine off recently and I'm like, it seems long to me. If I were the client, I'd be like, overwhelmed. What are we still doing here? <laughs> yeah, so this one comes with 29 pages. Right. It's kind of long, I think. I mean, your listing presentation, it should just be like, because you're really not, your listing presentation, it should actually just be called the marketing presentation, okay? Because it's not going to be something that you're going to go over with every page with them. Right. You, what you're going to go over with them is your CMA. Because mm -hmm. that's it. When, if I sit down with her at their, her kitchen table, the first thing that comes up is price. Always. It's not how you're going to market my house. It's what do you think this house is worth, right? And so you have that conversation by showing up the comps and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you, and if you agree on the price at that point, great, sign a contract. Mm -hmm. But if they go, whoa, 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 what are you going to do for marketing for me? Which is, that's where it would come up. This is your explanation. Get it? It's your, uh, your what do you call it? Proof, evidence, mm -hmm. your, your plan. Well, this is what we do for marketing and here's what we're gonna do. And, and uh, Say that you don't go over it with them. So we agree on price, we like it, we sign. Mm -hmm. You still leave that with them to be able to look over what sure, you know. Sure, you can leave it. Or I mean, if they, yeah, sure. Cause then they get to see your testimonials yeah. and they get to, but you're not gonna sit there and be like, please read me my testimonials while I sit. Craziness when people do that. I, so you're not presenting the listing presentation. That's the whole thing. Like it's not the right word for it. Yeah. Because your only presentation is really your pricing mm -hmm. presentation, right? Mm -hmm. But when you you want the pages that are gonna answer the objections. Mm -hmm. That's what I would say. Okay. So like take out whatever doesn't make any sense to you. Sure. But if somebody gives you like a question, even when like you were making phone calls earlier, if someone says to you like on the phone, like well, well, where do you think the market's going to be in like six months, for example? Right. So then that's something you might want to have in there. Sure. Right. Look, okay. things that are going to, you're a lawyer, right? And you're in a courtroom. The, law, the lawyer is going to expect them, to, he already knows what questions to ask the person to get them to say the right thing so the jury hears it, right? So I ask her, did you or did you not? And then now, you know, she looks bad and now the jury's like, oh my God, guilty, right? Because I already knew, I didn't ask the question I didn't know the answer to. Yeah. Jojo, I'm ready for you. Have you guys met Joy and Gallon? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, you're a couple of people. How are you? 
We were just talking about listing. Yes. Yeah. She football. Do you have an orange and an orange sheet? <laughs> oh, it is a football. It's a football. <laughs> She's like a football fanatic. She's a little spin on it, though. You like that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I'm sorry. We just have one yet. I know. Tomorrow. <laughs> I am planning on it tomorrow. Hi. Hi. <laughs> So we were just talking about like net sheets and hey Dustin, come in. Yeah. Um, this is the KWB city. Yes. Oh, you're cute. Jojo comes with gifts every time. I get to keep it. Yeah, I can get more. My is this, yeah. My just stress I'm into that. Don't. Yeah. Uh, don't tell me all right. Time. So listings and listing presentations. She has so much great material. If you like say you're gonna go look at somebody's house or you need to like know more about the history or what they sell on it or whatever, call her. She'll get you a report right away, or she can also just give you the app where you can just pull her up. I, I, I could do I, I could do both, but everybody should get the app. Yeah. And uh, if you want it, it's a uh, I'm gonna show you. It's a little orange. It's a little orange. Yeah. OC is it just OCT? It's oh it, but just so you know what it looks like. It's this little. So, I OCT space mobile. OCT space, but it's like it's this little orangey thing. Perfect. It takes about a minute for you guys to set it up. Like you'll create a profile. When you create a profile, you don't need a strong password. You don't need you just need a password, your office address, your information. Be sure to put my name as the rep, and I'll give you my information, Joanne Gamlin. I'll give you something with my name on it because. I have to send it in for approval. They don't want everybody to just have access to this because there's a lot of personal information you can get on here. So it's this little orange thing. It's really good. So you can, if you're like walking in the neighborhood and you're like, oh, my house is worth. Oh, orange is worth. How much do they owe on it? So you can see all kinds of things. It looks like that. So you're like, yeah. Yeah. Well, no, no. So you go in, you'll download the app, and then you'll set up your profile. When you set up your profile, it'll say, who's your rep? Yeah. Why put me? Because I'll get notification, then I'll send it to my office manager to approve you guys. Because you need to, we don't want just everybody uh, to have access to this. And I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you guys this good booklet. This one is really good. So this is like almost like the walkthrough guide of what happens. Uh, it, it gives you info on title, on escrow, on lending, on taxes. Has anybody ever heard of Mel Bruce? Mm -hmm. yeah. you know that is? Oh, all right, I'll give you that. Oh, you guys are smart. <laughs> yeah, you're you're just one of our training. <laughs> 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 so, I'm short one. So, okay. oh, you do? I was going to say, I'm like, oh, oh so, perfect. Okay. I, I didn't even know how many people were doing. I just, I just, I just, I just, oh, my name is Joanne Gallen. And I'm going to put on the back there. Oh, yeah. I, 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 okay. I just didn't mind, but. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> Oh, yeah. There's that cute cast in the back. Yeah, that little guy. I don't need little me. So, if someone wants to let's talk to you there, I want to talk to you through the night. You know, he's like sitting here. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm going to go ahead and get the next one. Hey, you guys. And then I could also teach you about something called Title Toolbox. The Title Toolbox. Right, because if you if you email me, tell me to sign you up on Title Toolbox because I can sign you in for free. Title Toolbox is another tool we use where you can actually pull specifically like affidavit of debt, divorces, bankruptcies, and it, it, there's a little charge on that, but like pennies to to get that. But to to become part of uh, Title Toolbox, come through me because then there's no a couple hundred dollar initiation fee. It's free. So email me. Y'all have my email. Tell me that you met me here. So we're going to do a test. <laughs> I don't know anybody's name except Dustin and Cheyenne. Victor. Victor. Mia. What's your name? Mia. I think I know you. Yeah. I'm Elsie I met you at So cute. <laughs> <laughs> Amin. Amin? Amin? A M I N? A M W E R. Amir. Oh, Amir. Richard. Hey, Richard. 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 Mia, Amir, R Richard, Richard. Call me Rich. Rich. <laughs> Dustin, although I also call him Sean sometimes because we have another friend who looks similar to him. Yeah. And whenever I'm with one of them, I call the other one the other same. So I don't just do it to you. You know I do it to Sean. When I'm with Sean, I call him Dustin. <laughs> and Cap Girl. 
And what's yeah. your name? So, so anyway, this this all applies in your value drop, right? So when you do your make your presentation, I think about what you stand for, all of that stuff. Um, but what I like about Jojo also, besides being amazing and helpful at all times, is that she also sends out those like different calendars for like what holidays are coming up, like stuff you can share with your client. Oh yeah, I was going to say my yeah. company. It gives me stuff like President's Day for Valentine's Day, whatever, whatever. Before they brand it for me, I can give it to you. And you can, I don't care what you do with it. And just because they give it to me with my face on it, but before they do, they give right. me a blank one. So um, yeah. And so you always with your reps, like whoever you're working with, like title or what lenders or whoever. They, they'll all take your business because you're gonna need them for the transaction, right? Yeah. You want to work with the ones that help you before you have the transaction. You want to work with the ones who help you find the transaction, right? Mm -hmm. And so well, she's so, so super helpful. So look at all this stuff. Look at it. <laughs> oh, it's hard. Hard. You know what? I got to tell you. I, I, I don't say I'm like, I don't brag about this stuff, but I am fun. <laughs> and does anybody need, does anybody need a 20, 22 day plan? I know a lot of people don't use it anymore. They, we got them really late. Right. Rick, with number two, you know what? Give it to your sister if you don't like it. <laughs> your sister. Your wife. I don't know. Thank you. Make her a beer with your liquor. This doesn't smell like orange. No, it's like you guys are like it. And then I miss the more. I'm really Thank you. You want more beer? Yes, this one. Okay. Okay. All right, so is anybody doing brokers today? Yeah. yeah. So Shane's gonna go, Rick is gonna go, <laughs> Justin's going, and Nelson's gonna go. We all have fun. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. It happens every week. Yeah, are you, I don't know if you're going. I don't know if you're going. If you go to my car, you will be sitting in the there's a nice man outside I met from your office. I can't remember his name. He was waiting. You, was, you tell him to come here. Yeah. The Mario. Oh. 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 Uh, uh, thank you, ma'am. Mario wants to put me up here. Okay, so is this helpful? 100%. Yes. You guys help me out? I mean, there are many questions on this stuff, but that's that's the basis for the value prop. Please be, schedule yourself some time to go through that exercise. Yeah. And get that book to find your why. If, if even for online, you know, whatever the hell you guys need or listen, or really do. Because even if you listen to the very first episode only, or the, the first chapter, read the first chapter, it already talks about that why profit branding and how to like how to make it more impactful. Like here, I sell we sell cookies that make everyone's life better. Or you know, our mission is to make sure that nobody goes hungry, you know, or whatever. So it's like that whole difference of how you say it, it makes all the difference, yeah. right? Okay, guys, thank you for being here. Thank you so much. Um, tomorrow, Champagne Moore is teaching the class. You're gonna love oh, she's her. A she's a hoot and a half. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna love her. Um, so make sure you're here for that one. And it's about finding and winning buyers which is our market right now, right? Yeah. Um, and then there'll be a listing of later, but, all right? Awesome. Thank you so much. Cool. I feel like I always come out with a house from your classes in particular, and that's how you just put walling sugar up your ass or whatever they say. <laughs> I wanted to remind you that. Uh, Did you make a list? Uh, oh, yeah, you said I kind of have a list. But I just want to remind you about that. If any of these, if anybody's interested, she does four other classes too. Okay, I'm gonna and then I'll post this. The title toolbox, we could do a Zoom with Diana if you want. Okay, cool. So, how many of you have Lex, do we need to print it? Um, or did you I have it in my phone. Yeah, yeah. Aaron said he's going to. Yeah. Did you put a. Uh, I don't have it printed, no. I'm going to have to pay for it. That's okay. What's that? I got to pay you. Oh, no, 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 no. What? Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, oh, Aaron's going to go outside. Aaron's going to go outside. Next time, outside, Justin, so we have to fix the car. Come on, anybody else want to go for a ride? My car? Okay. No, she's going to that car. Oh, no, wait, okay. I think I have From property to property. It's all right. I'm not bad. Does anybody want to go? Broker? I'm driving. I'm driving. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 Okay.
Thank <laughs> you. 
So I know
Same thing with me. 
just let I ended up going to an LAFC soccer game for the supporter session. <laughs> Come home, you get showered when you were there. It's every time there's a goal or anything, like everybody's throwing like 15 dollars at the year. The bleachers are so like slippery because there's a metal on the side. No, they have the the seats. There's seats there, but they have bars on them that you cannot put down. Everybody's standing on top of like the hammer. Yeah, I've seen it. I've never seen it. No, no. So on one end of the field? Yeah. Oh, 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 Yeah. Yeah, I just went to the to the Lakers against the Pacers like two week, a week or two ago. And yeah, 1575 over there. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's 24. So it's two years. So it's not too too bad if you think about it, but it's two years. The worst was I went to Disneyland the day before I went to um the, the Lakers game. And it was twelve dollars for the twelve night. Never forget that California picture. But Disneyland is kind of cool. I brought my big like steel thermos thing, and I filled it up with lots of stuff before I went. Oh, really? Because yeah, they don't care. Not even when you get it. They don't give it to you. Well, they didn't open it or anything. But at least.
just went through the process. We got this like two days. Thank you. And then we can talk about that. Yeah, so we that. And it was actually a piece of advice compared to other things we got. Do the work and then we pay for it. We had like $50,000 for Yeah. I mean, it's a huge house. So it's like mostly hard to make. That's how much you bought Yeah. 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 Because yeah. yeah. we are not strong that way. Yeah. 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 
Thank <laughs> you. 